Time to melt down and reform the ballistics gel. Now, what you're going to need is, obviously, a mold. The manufacturer, Claire Ballistics, they sell some beautiful molds, very reasonable prices. I almost ordered some, but then I decided to try my hand at making my own. Pretty simple, using just folding metal from the hardware store. Click here, you can find instructions on how to do that. Or, you can find things at thrift stores, very inexpensively. Now, to get cooking, one of the first things we need to do is cut up our gel block into more reasonable sized pieces and wash them down, make sure they're clean. Cut out any of the bad parts, the dark parts, dirty parts, um, so that your final product has a reasonable amount of clarity to it. What I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to melt it in two shallow containers. In my previous one, I melted it in one large stainless steel stock pot and there was just too much mass for the heat to effectively get to the center even though I had cut it up into pieces. So I'm going to put some gel in here and I'm going to start melting it down and as it melts down I'm going to add more gel to each one and I think that this is really going to improve and optimize the melt times and the end quality. Claire Ballistics says not to heat the gel up beyond 280 degrees some tips from other people who use this said to melt at a lower temperature for a longer time for better results. So I'm going to try setting the oven for oh, about 260. Now if you'll notice down here I've got a second thermometer for a second opinion. I've also got yet another hanging from the top of the oven. That way I can make sure my temperatures are accurate and I don't ruin my gel. You're going to be dealing with hot liquid, so you're going to want some oven mitts, or in my case, I just grabbed my welding gloves. A large spoon. Something to strain out large pieces of debris. Um, here is just a piece of mesh. I think this was intended to go on top of a gutter to keep leaves out of it, but you can be resourceful and just find a kitchen strainer or whatever works for you. And uh, some safety glasses probably wouldn't hurt either. We're about 10 minutes into it, and you can see that things are starting to gloss over and melt down. Okay, we're about half an hour into it, so let's go ahead and check on things here. It looks like we're cooking it about 260 degrees and stuff is melting nicely. One thing I recommend having handy is something to set your spoon on or whatever you're working with. I recommend stainless steel and I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and add some more material, spread it around so that these small chunks, the heat from the molten material around it can help facilitate melting these down more effectively. If you throw this all in at once, it will just mass up and then you're going to play the waiting game. Here's why I recommended setting your spoon on stainless steel. Aluminum works well also because just about a minute after you take it out, this is solidified and you can toss it back into the pot instead of wasting it. We're about an hour into things here, and I want to point out a few things. First of all, something that made a world of difference in controlling my temperatures is I put some pieces of aluminum foil on the bottom rack, and that helped prevent direct heat from radiating off the electrical heating elements. And instead, it's more of a smooth convection heat, which has really stabilized my temperatures fantastically. That made a huge difference. Secondly, something, the aluminum pan with the shallow walls has melted much more effectively and quicker than the stainless steel pan with high walls. And that's for two reasons. First of all, aluminum conducts heat fantastically. Stainless steel doesn't do that nearly as well. And secondly, I believe the height of this wall has prevented heat from getting to the 
top surface of the gel as effectively as it did over on this side. So keep that in mind when you go to melt and you're choosing your containers. See if you can find some shallow aluminum ones. I'm going to go ahead and add more material to this one and let the other one sit. So first, I'm going to pull my bottom tray out. And I'm going to put a pan there in case I spill anything so that I don't lose the material. Next, I'm going to take one of my pans and I'm going to set it up top to get it out of the way. Slide this rack out like that. Here's my mold. This stuff is very hot. I'm going to be very careful. just like that through the grate. And as you can see, some of the chunks and debris have stayed in the bottom of the pan, which is great. Now I'm not gonna worry about getting all this material out because I can just peel it off in a few minutes. That went well. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide this back into the oven. And I'm going to leave that grate on top of it for a reason. Now we have to let it bake another couple hours to get the bubbles out. Now that we've poured our gel, our pans still have some material in them. So now that they've cooled for a couple minutes, you can just grab the gel on the edges, peel it out. It comes out very easily. So what I'll do here is just set this stuff on top of my grate. and it will melt down into the mix. The reason that we're continuing to bake this, even though it's in the mold, is for a very good reason, and that is during the process of melting and pouring, it gets bubbles in it. So we need to let it cook in the mold so the bubbles can rise out. Now at this point, I can tell that the bubbles are pretty much gone. There's a few little ones here and there, but as far as all the major stuff, it's clear. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. I'm going to shut the oven off and let it sit until tomorrow. Here's some gel. It's been in this mold for a while now. So let's go ahead and see if we can wrestle it out of there. You'll notice that it can be pulled away from the wall without too much trouble. But keep in mind this fits pretty tight in this mold and it does take some effort to get it out of there, um, especially to get it started. Now this gel is pretty rugged so you don't really need to worry about hurting it. I'd suggest starting with clean hands and just simply start pulling it away at one end and try to wrestle down to the very bottom. Get your hand down in there so that you can start to pull it from the bottom of the mold. There. 
There, I've got my hand under the bottom of the block now. Then things start to get a little bit easier. There's our gel block, remolded, ready to use. You'll notice the sides are a little bit cloudy. Well, this can be heated up with a heat gun and it'll make it nice and glossy smooth. Few air bubbles, not many, that's okay. And if you look on the bottom, you'll see there is some lead fragments that when the mold was poured, all the heavy stuff sunk to the bottom. I don't think that'll be an issue because it's at the very bottom of the block. When the gel is in storage, it will take on the shape of whatever's pressing against it. In this case, the wax paper has caused these wrinkles. Over here, this is the block that I just pulled out of the mold, so it's nice and smooth. Because of this, it might be advisable to simply have two molds on hand and keep the gel in the molds until you're ready to use it. So here's my advice based upon my experience. Heat is your biggest enemy. You need to keep your temperatures low and in order to do that and still have the gel melt you need to optimize the way that the heat can reach the product. What I did is I went and found two aluminum pans of the proper dimensions so that they'll both fit side by side in the oven and the capacity of the two pans can handle the total volume of one gel block. Good luck to you and be safe when working with this hot molten gel.